Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. While Sales Marketing and Services Group, DCC, recently announced an 11% increase in its operating profit, recording an incredible figure of £589 million last year. But how are such profits achieved and what is it like to run a hugely successful PLC? Donald Murphy, the group's chief executive, joins us now to provide us with an insight. Donald, we'll be discussing DCC's current performance, but first, provide us with an insight into your career and your long association with the company. Morning, Carl. It's good to be here. Sure. I I joined Carl DCC 24 years ago, uh, which is kind of scary at this stage. I spent uh, 12 years in financial services, worked in AIB, uh, having completed a business degree before that, and uh, joined DCC when it was a, a relatively small business. Uh, a diverse business uh, joined because I liked the diversity within the uh, within the organisation, and I spent the last 24 years in in various different roles. Became chief executive five years ago, so uh, been around the group for, for for a fair while now at this stage. And Donald, talk to us about how the company has developed over the past 24 years. Sure. Well, D- DCC, I suppose, prior to to to, to joining uh, Carl DCC, started life as a venture capital company and grew to be Ireland's leading venture capital company. We had offices in London, we had offices in Boston, and then we decided to change to become an industrial group. Uh, we set about doing that kind of from 1990 up until 1994 when we went public, uh, and you know broadly kind of uh, set about uh, getting businesses, controlling interest in businesses in the energy sector, the healthcare sector, the technology sector, and uh, from uh, small beginnings have grown the business uh, into a group today that's operating in 21 countries on three different continents, uh, and last year had revenues of almost £18 billion, so uh, it's, been a, it's been a great success story over, uh, over that period. And from a geographical perspective, what markets are the most lucrative and where do you see more potential for growth? I think, you know, again, we're, we're, we're in 21 different countries, uh, Carl, uh, and, uh, you know, we see lots of opportunity to continue to grow within each of the markets that we operate within. I suppose the big development for us over the last couple of years really has been expanding our business out into North America. So, you know, just over four years ago, we had no business in North America, and today we have 31% of our capital employed in North America, all three sectors uh, in North America, 3,000 people uh, working for DCC in North America but very small market shares in each of those sectors. So, you know, huge potential for further growth in very large fragmented markets. But again, you know, Europe is a a very big part of our business. And uh, having uh, started this organization in Ireland, uh, you know, we have uh, we have grown the business substantially into continental Europe. Still, plenty of opportunities to grow within uh, within Europe, and we have a small presence in Asia. Uh, again, which over time uh, we'll uh, we'll continue to develop. And what specific sectors do you see the greatest growth opportunity in? I think you know again, Carl. One of the one of the important parts of uh, of the DCC business model is the diversity within the group. So, uh, having exposure to three different sectors: the energy sector, the healthcare sector, and the technology sector. And all aspects uh, of our energy, or of our or of our business, uh, have growth uh, opportunities within it. I suppose our healthcare business is the highest uh, organic growth sector. People are living longer. They need more care. They're taking more nutritional supplements. All areas that uh, we have a strong uh, presence in. So that's the, I suppose, the highest growth area that we have within the group. Our technology business, as we all know, technology is uh, is pervasive uh, in everything that we do, and we've technology businesses. Uh, across uh, again three different uh, three different continents and over 20 countries, uh, and you know building those businesses that's a that's a high organic growth uh, market for us as well. And then the energy business, uh, while it's a more mature market, you know we are a leader uh, and building a leadership position in energy transition and supporting our customers uh, to cleaner energy products and services. And again, as we go through energy transition in the years and decades to come, that's going to be a big growth area for us. So. Uh, you know, see, see plenty of growth opportunities across each of the sectors that we operate within. And on the topic of energy, Donald, how long do you expect energy prices to continue to rise for? 
Oh, it, look, it's, it's it's very hard to call, uh, Carl. Like the, uh, uh, and any time I've tried to call energy prices in the past, I've been wrong. But but clearly, you know what's happening in uh, in Ukraine is horrific from a humanitarian perspective, and has created a huge amount of uh, uncertainty uh, within the energy markets, particularly in Europe. And and you know, and there's there's certainly no visibility uh, of uh, of that ending uh, any time soon. So I think while there's uh, while there's such uncertainty. Uh, out there within the world, we're going to see uh, we're going to see high energy prices, unfortunately, which puts pressure on uh, on all our customers. But uh, you know, it's a it's a pretty volatile world out there. And what direct challenges does the volatile backdrop pose for DCC? One of the great things about uh, the DCC business, uh, Carl, and we've seen this uh, all the way through the uh, the pandemic, is you know we provide our customers, and probably not something we talked about pre-pandemic, but pretty much everything we do across the DCC group is essential products and services. So whether that's you know the energy to heat your home, to to run factories, to to run commercial premises for our agricultural customers, whether it's the energy to move about whether it's the, uh, the healthcare products that we're providing into the hospitals and into the GP sector, or it's the nutritional supplements that people are taking to keep themselves healthy, or indeed the technologies uh, that people use to run their everyday lives, to work from home, to work in the office. All those products are, are pretty essential to, to everyday living. So regardless of you know, whether we're in a pandemic, whether we go into recessionary times, you know, the products and services that uh, DCC provides to its customers are required. So we have great uh, resilience uh, in our business model. And maybe, as you said, around this group for 24 years, one of the benefits have been around for a long time as we've seen many cycles in the past and uh, you know, the business has, has performed very well through them. Uh, so I you know, feel, feel pretty good good about the business, notwithstanding the, uh, the challenges in the market. And on the topic of cycles, where do you think we are in the current economic cycle? I think it's going to be tough for uh, for a, a good while to come. Uh, I think we have uh, we've been in an environment where uh, I suppose the consumer has uh, has had a little bit of cash uh, post the pandemic, and that has uh, has created resilience uh, at the moment uh, within the economies. But uh, you know that cash uh, that cash will uh, will get spent, and uh, you know we'll have a we'll have a tough uh, a tough time kind of down the road. I think a little bit, but uh, you know it's. Um, it's a it's a volatile world out there. You know, it's it's kind of it's hard to call some of those areas. But uh, I'd be maybe more on the bearish side at the moment of where the economy sits. The technology division of DCC lists Amazon as a customer. Provide us with an insight into this relationship. Sure. No, we've been working with Amazon for. Uh, uh, for, for for many years, and uh, again, key feature of uh, of our technology uh, business is providing uh, a very broad range of products uh, into the uh, retail, the online retail, the uh, reseller sectors of the market. So we, we pretty much work with all the uh, all the large retailers and resellers in the uh, in the countries that we operate within. Amazon clearly is one of is, is one of the biggest uh, or the biggest retailer in the world now, and uh, we provide a breadth of of, uh, of products to them uh, and we provide services to them as well where uh, plenty of the products that you will uh, you look to buy on an Amazon website uh, are available uh, to all our customers and, and we will uh, on Amazon's behalf pick, pack and ship them directly to a customer uh, under an Amazon invoice in an Amazon box so a, a very connected uh, relationship with them. Talk to us about the group's investment in electric vehicle infrastructure and the payback that you expect from this investment. Yeah, the, the you know electric vehicles are going to be a key part of uh, of energy transition, and uh, you know we see the uh, particularly the passenger car uh, market uh, shifting uh, towards electrification over the coming years uh, and decades. And you know we are lucky uh, to be operating within the uh, the market up in Norway, where uh, a number of years ago we bought uh, Exxon Mobil's business uh, in Norway. And Norway is the market with the highest penetration of EVs globally. And we're seeing firsthand the consumer behaviour uh, as EV uh, adoption uh, grows, and you know a key uh, a key part of the EV ecosystem is having fast charging infrastructure at well located sites. And 
you know we have uh, we have some really well located sites uh, throughout that market so we're seeing uh, you know very uh, good growth in demand for for fast charging uh, we're seeing the income per customer per per charge if you like or per fill uh, being higher in, on an EV than it would be on uh, on traditional liquid based fuels uh, and our customers rather than spending kind of on average three minutes on the site spend 30 minutes on the site uh, and uh, avail of the, the high quality convenience offerings that we have on our site so uh, I think EV and adoption of EV is uh, is very good uh, for our retail uh, for core business. And Donald, in terms of your own role, how does the company's status as a PLC both impact and influence your running of the business? You know, we, we've we've been a PLC, Carl, for 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 24 years, and uh, I think it's it is uh, it's a great discipline being a, a PLC because you have uh, you've got a focus uh, not just on your shareholders but but all your stakeholders because you've a you know a, a, a large public uh, presence if you like in in, in the market. So uh, you know we take uh, we've always taken long term sustainable view uh, of how we grow our business so we make the right decisions. We don't make short term decisions. And I think that's one of the things that people often say in, in, in the PLC world, that you're just focused on the next quarter. Uh, you know, we've never just focused on the next quarter. We're, we're, we're always focused on driving growth uh, and sustainable growth uh, for, for, for the long term. So, uh, but it is, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's good. Every, 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 every few months we have to go to the market. We have to, uh, we have to talk about our performance. We have to be, be very uh, public on all our investment decisions and that, uh, that creates good discipline in how we run the business. DCC recently reported full operating profits of £589 million, representing an 11% increase on the previous year. What do you attribute this performance to? Yeah, again, you know, when, uh, and go back, Carl, to uh, to May 20, or to, to March 2020 and, and, and looking at the start of the pandemic and trying to think how our business would perform uh, through the pandemic and we ran multiple different scenarios uh, and uh, under none of the scenarios that we ran in the first year so to our prior financial year to, to, to March uh, 21 uh, did we see ourselves growing our profits but we grew our profits by over 7% and as you say in the in the year just gone to, to last March we grew our profits by 11% and actually underlying with currency, it was a 15% growth. Uh, and it, it really comes back to the essential nature of the products and services we provide to our customers, you know, our ability to uh, to manage these businesses as well uh, through, the, uh, through the challenging environment. Uh, we had good bounce back actually in demand for, 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 for our energy uh, products as lockdowns started to ease within the market. We had very strong demand in the healthcare sector, uh, both in providing Providing the essential uh, PPE and, and other COVID-related products into the healthcare systems uh, in Britain and Ireland in the uh, in the dark region, uh, and uh, very strong demand for nutritional supplements as people continued to focus on their health. Uh, and then we had a bounce back as again as lockdown, lockdowns eased uh, in demand for business technology products and particularly areas like uh, professional uh, audiovisual products as uh, as as, as, as businesses start to, to move back into the office as uh, retailers started to open up as people started to go back to concerts and so on so uh, you know the uh, the easing of lockdowns helped but you know throughout the uh, throughout the whole pandemic uh, the DCC businesses uh, all performed very well you recently announced an updated strategy for DCC energy what does it now entail and this has been, been been very important for us, Carl. We have uh, we have a substantial uh, business in the energy sector. We provide uh, customers with uh, energy products uh, and services. Nine million customers across 13 different countries. And uh, you know, as we look to the future, you know, the 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 the, the absolute imperative for people to decarbonize and ultimately to to, to get to net zero emissions uh, is something that uh, we absolutely Absolutely uh, believe fundamentally in, and we want to position our business uh, to support our customers uh, to decarbonize and uh, and bring the right products and services uh, to our customers. So, you know, the strategy, and we've been we've, we've been on this journey for, for for some time, but the the new strategy was really to uh, outline to the market.
markets that you know we will be leading with energy, that we will be leading our customers uh, through uh, through decarbonisation, providing a broader range uh, of products and services to to, to our customers, uh, and uh, you know that's uh, that's all about providing solutions to customers to help them uh, on that journey, be it you know a domestic customer to heat their home to to, to get access to renewable electricity uh, over time to be able to produce their own electricity to store it to charge their vehicles Donald acquisitions have played a key role in relation to assisting DCC's growth over the years talk to us about your approach to acquisition targets yeah we we've uh, we've we've been as you say it's a, a key part of our group like we've grown our we've grown our earnings uh, Ever since we went public 28 years ago, 14% year on year, and about a third of that has been organic, and the rest comes from acquisition activity. So uh, we've completed uh, almost 350 uh, acquisitions over that period. And you know, ideally, uh, you know, our uh, our focus on acquisitions is to build relationships uh, with people in the industry sectors that we're in, in the markets that we're in, or indeed, uh, you know, building relationships with people that will bring us into into new geographies uh, and. And uh, over time, convincing them that they'd much prefer uh, to be running their business within our group uh, as opposed to as an independent organisation. Donald, DCC is a leading international sales and marketing group with a clear focus on performance and growth. What advice do you have for any business owner listening to this morning's show that wants to focus more on their sales and marketing activity? Yeah, I, I, I think the, the, one of the key things, and, and it is that, you know, you talk about performance, growth, ambition. Uh, I think you have to be hungry uh, to grow your business. And if you're hungry to grow your business, you know, you will uh, you'll leave no stone unturned to uh, to build the relationships uh, with your customers or potential customers. And, you know, that is you know, the essence uh, of everything we do across our organization is, is, is relationship selling. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty simple stuff. If you've good relationships with uh, with people, uh, you'll be able to do good business with them. So you gotta you gotta work hard on that. I think in the modern uh, world we're living in now, the uh, you know channels to market, so electronic channels to market, digital engagement with customers is key. Uh, you know, building your presence uh, in the digital world, but having that very efficiently linked into your business, so that you know I think the biggest the biggest challenge lots of uh, lots of companies have is uh, you know they have. A, they have a good website or, or they have an online presence but uh, it's not fully integrated and they, uh, they let down the customer because they don't deliver uh, when someone uh, someone tries to engage with them so uh, you know as you adopt new ways of doing things you've got to make sure that it works very uh, very efficiently but it's it's about relationships it's about uh, it's about working hard on your relationships with your customers and potential customers and if you do that uh, you know you will uh, you'll succeed. And Donald, finally, what are the future growth plans for DCC? Yeah, we, we, we've... Uh we, we we want to continue uh, doing what we're doing, Carl. Really, in ways they uh, say, uh, as they say in the ad, the past is no guide uh, to the future. But the track record is pretty good. Our strategy is very clear. We have um, you know real platforms for growth. I talked earlier about uh, you know the developments for us in North America over the last four years. So uh, it's, it's it's really continuing doing what we're doing, and uh, you know being uh, ambitious uh, about the growth opportunities. In, in, in each of the sectors that we're in because there's loads of opportunities out there and while the world might be difficult uh, for a period of time actually in the difficult times uh, you know if you play your cards right uh, you can actually accelerate growth Well if you've just tuned in that was Donald Murphy the Chief Executive of DCC and I'd like to thank Donald for taking us behind the scenes at one of Ireland's leading public limited companies Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.